All right. So now let's finally do our last step here, which is going to be push to GitHub. You have done a ton this project, and this is the final step. Oh my goodness, what a badass GitHub repo you are about to push up. A couple of notes when we do this. The first thing is make sure that .env is in your .gitignore. I additionally like to add broadcast in here as well. I don't like to push broadcast up. Anything that's not in here, you could accidentally push up publicly to your GitHub. So we don't want to do that. Sometimes it's good to even keep lib out and I'm actually going to do that here. I'm going to put, take lib out as well. All right. So let's learn how to push our code up to GitHub. We're using this hard hat free code camp because I've made it in one of my previous videos and we're starting from a blank GitHub. So at this point you should have a GitHub repository and you'll probably see even less on here than what you see right now because yours will be totally blank. GitHub and Git and version control is so crucial because it's how most of the crypto community interacts and builds with each other. So anytime you go to any GitHub repository, like for example, the Aave protocol, which is completely open source, you can come in here and you can make issues on the repo. You can make pull requests. You can actively participate in working with these protocols. For example, Solidity, which is what we're working on right now, is also an open source repo. And I know I've been saying this a lot, but repo is slang for repository. A code repository is where all the code of a project belongs. It's one of the beautiful things with Web3 and crypto is that all the smart contracts you're gonna work with are open source. You can actually see the code, learn from the code and get better yourself. And if you're asking for places to participate and contribute, most of these protocols have grants and they'll actually pay you to help them work with their code. Or if you just wanna learn, you can make pull requests to code bases as well. When I was first getting started in Web3, one of the best things I did was make contributions to the Brownie repo, which is a Pythonic smart contract framework similar to Foundry. And I did it for free because I wanted to learn and I wanted to see if I could contribute. Doing stuff like this allowed me to learn much faster and get to meet and interact with a lot of people in the community. And it's a ton of fun. And like I said, this will be your profile for careers, for jobs, etc. Anytime I'm interviewing a candidate for my roles, one of the first things I do is actually look at their GitHub. Now GitHub is a centralized company and there are decentralized Git solutions being worked on right now, but none of them are really popular at the moment. So with that being said, if we're at the GitHub docs right now, we can go ahead to get started and we can even go to the quick start. There's a whole lot of docs here. We should of course already have a GitHub profile set up. And if you want, you can go to this create a repo section, which will teach you how to create a repo directly through the website. But we want to do it from the command line. Why? Because we are engineers and we want to do what? That's right. We want to work incredibly hard to be incredibly lazy. And we don't want to have to log onto the internet every single time we want to make changes to our code. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow this documentation called adding locally hosted code to GitHub because our code here is obviously locally hosted. We're going to push it to GitHub. So if we scroll down in the docs here, it gives us a little bit of, and we down, we get to the, our first bit, initializing a Git repository. So if we haven't already installed Git, which we should, you want to first install Git before we keep going. The directions for installing Git can be found here and the GitHub repo associated with this course. And you'll know you've done it right if you can do Git dash dash version and you see something like this show up, could be a slightly different version. If this Git version doesn't pop up, pause the video and go and install Git. If you run into trouble, of course, you can use the discussions here or your AI friend. Now that you have Git, we need to initialize a Git repository. Foundry actually automatically initializes a Git repository for us. Most of the time, you can just run Git status and see some type of output that might look like this. If you don't see an output that looks like that after running Git status, you might have to do Git init dash B main. And if we run this now, we'll get a warning. Reinit ignored, reinitializing existing Git repository because we already have a Git repository in here. If you're using an earlier version of Git, we could do something like this. But then what we want to do is we want to do something called adding our files. So if we do clear now, so first let's make sure we're on this correct folder, right? So we'll do an ls. Ah, we can see all the stuff that we're in. We'll do pwd as well. PWD allows us to see the path that we're currently in. LS prints all the 
folders and files in our current directory or folder. Great, this is indeed the correct folder. If you're not in the correct folder, you can CD down or CD up into your correct folder. But before we do git add, we usually wanna do a git status. This git status will tell us, well, let me just pull this up here. This git status will tell us what files and folders we're gonna push up to GitHub. One of the things we should always check when doing git status is, is a dot env in here or is there any sensitive information in here? And then I'll explain some of these greens and red stuff in a second. But looking at this, I see get modules, that's fine. Those libs are fine. Get ignore is good. We definitely want to push up get ignore because get ignore is good. We deleted those counters, so those are good. Get snapshot, make file. Okay, the rest of this looks pretty good. Let's clear this for now. If I were to pull this down and I were to open up my dot get ignore, which we can do by either going to here and selecting dot get ignore, or we can open up our file explorer with command P or control P, depending on your environment, and typing in dot get ignore. We scroll to the bottom, we see this dot AV. If I were to remove this and then save, pull my terminal up and do git status, you'll now see this dot env does indeed show up in here. We absolutely don't want this because these are the files that we're gonna potentially push up to GitHub and expose to the internet. So we don't wanna, we absolutely don't wanna do this. We wanna make sure our dot env is in our dot get ignore. So we can do that. Or if you're being a total badass, you've encrypted your key in a separate file outside of this package, or maybe you're just gonna use third web deploy instead of actually putting private keys in here. But in any case, we're gonna do clear. And now we're gonna do git add period. This period says add all of the folders and all the files that are in here in that git status, except for the ones obviously in the dot get ignored. Now, if I do git status now, you'll see they're all green. This means that all these green stuff are changes to be committed. They're staged, if you will. They're in a stage position. These are all the changes that we're going to commit to our history. So if we type git log right now, we can actually see a list of something called commits. We can see two in here right now. You might see a different number, I see two. Git keeps a versioned history of your code base. This way in the future, if you make a mistake, you can revert back to a previous version very easily. So now if we do git status, again, we'll see all this green stuff. We'll look through these and looks like these are good. There's no dot env here in here. All of this looks like, looks solid. We'll do our first commit. So we'll do git commit dash M, which stands for message, our first commit, little exclamation point, and hit enter. And you'll see something like this pop up. And then you might get something like this if you've never worked with Git before. Your name and email were added automatically. We're a little bit confused here. We'll talk about this in a second. Now, if I do a git status, it says on branch main, nothing to commit, working tree clean. But if I do git log, I now see a new commit, our first commit, even though it's the third commit, it's fine. <laughs> our first commit, great. But if you flip over to your GitHub, and you hit refresh, there's still nothing up here. So this commit history is stored locally in our computer. We wanna push up all that code up to GitHub here. And that's what we're gonna do next. So we did git add, we did git commit, and then we're gonna do this bit, importing a git repository with the command line. After you initialize the Git repository, you can push the repository to GitHub using GitHub CLI or Git. One thing we can do is you can download this GitHub CLI with GH. We're gonna do it directly with Git because if you wanna work with GitLab or Radical or something else in the future, you'll be able to do it fine. So we're gonna scroll down to adding a local repository to GitHub using Git. It's important to note that GitHub and Git are actually different. Git is this version control thing. If I do Git log, it's this tool that allows us to do this version control. GitHub is a website that allows us to push our Git logs and our Git commits and all of our Git stuff. So Git is a tool, GitHub is a company and a website that allows us to push our Git stuff. So first thing we're gonna need to do is create a new repository on github.com. So we're gonna go to GitHub, our GitHub, we're gonna go to repositories. We're gonna do new, we're gonna call this foundry fund me F23, or whatever you want to call it. You can call it foundry first repo, probably no exclamation mark. I'll be like, thanks, crypto is awesome, or something like that. I'm going to do foundry, 
fund me F23. Add a description if you want. Let's make it public. We're going to do some open sourcey stuff and we're going to skip the rest of this for now. If you're really nervous about private keys and stuff, you can make this private, but keep in mind, even making this private doesn't mean your private key is safe because anybody who works at GitHub could see your private key. So we're going to make this public and it's good to get used to making public projects. And now you have a project on your resume and that's really cool. If you make it private, nobody can see your sick projects on your resume. So let's create this repository. And now we see we have a repository here and it's completely blank, right? There's no code in here. There's nothing going on in here. So we've done that though. Let's move to the next step. At the top of your repository, click the little copy thing to copy the remote repository URL. So here, so on my GitHub, we scroll down here, quick setup. If you've done this kind of thing before, just go ahead and copy this bit here. And we're going to run a couple of commands here. So first we're going to run git remote add origin and then paste that URL. This remote keyword refers to a website like GitHub. Add is saying we're going to add a remote place for us to push our code. Origin is a shortened name for this giant URL and this giant URL is the actual place. So with that, if we do git remote dash V, we actually can see all the different places we can push and pull our code from. Right now it's just the single because that's the one we added. So fetch is pull and push, and they're both pointing to the same place. Next, we're going to do git push dash u origin main. Git push dash u origin main. This is saying we want to push all of our current code to the URL associated with origin, which it's this one right here, and on the main branch. Don't worry about branches yet. Now, if you run into an issue like this, or if you just run into any issue, there's a couple different ways to troubleshoot. One of the ways is actually asking ChatGPT. ChatGPT is pretty darn good at troubleshooting Git and GitHub issues. One thing I can do for me, my issue is that I'm logged in as my main account, but I'm trying to push to this hard hat free code camp account. So I might do git config user.name and then I'll add user.name and I'll add this. And what this will do is it'll change the user that I'm trying to sign in with. And then we can do git push origin because origin is now pointing to this repo that we made and this is where we want to push to. And then we'll say main because main is the main branch that we want to work on. Again, don't worry too much about branches. And for me, it's asking for my GitHub password. And hopefully you'll see an output that looks like this. If you go back to your code and you ref and you hit refresh, you'll see all your code being pushed onto this GitHub repository. Fantastic. Now you have a project on your GitHub. And like I said, if you run into problems, ChatGPT or find or some other AI buddy are normally very good at helping you out and working with Git and making sure that Git works. This is phenomenal. Now, of course, we're going to go ahead and check this off. Our readme looks pretty terrible here. So if this were going to be more professional, we would have a little about section. This is a crowdsourcing app. We'd have a quick, a getting started with requirements, quick start and some, and yada, yada, yada. We would do, if we save that, we would do then get add dot, get commit minus M updated readme, get push. Oops. And then actually we can just do this so that we can just run git push instead of git push or domain every single time. I'm going to copy this line. Now, if I come back over to my project and I refresh, we'll see there are now four commits. This updated readme is my most recent one. If I scroll down to the readme, we now have an about blah, blah, blah and stuff. If you're looking for some extra credit, try setting up this readme without reading my readme. And then once you think you have a pretty solid readme, go to the foundry full course, GitHub repo associated with this course, scroll down to less than seven, go to the code base here, and you can actually go ahead and see if your readme is better than mine. Now that we know a little bit more about how Git works, you can see actually in my readme, if you scroll down, we have this thing called quick start with Git clones. Anytime you want to copy somebody else's code base locally, you can just run this Git clone. For example, if I'm in my VS code, I pull up the terminal, I'm going to go down a directory, PWD. Great, great. I'm here, ls. I can make a directory. 
Patrick fund me F23, I can come in and do git clone, paste that URL, the chain Excel org, Patrick fund me F23, hit enter. And now if I type LS, I'll have Patrick fund me F23. And if we do code, Patrick fund me F23, which will open up our VS code or do file open this folder, we can see this, this is actually Patrick's project pulled down from GitHub for us. Awesome work. And with that being said, you now have a project on your GitHub that you can show off. If you're excited about this, just scroll down, hit this tweet me button and tweet at me like this and just get super hyped up, right? Like I said, it's great to celebrate the little wins. Whew.